Um, we're going to talk about partial fraction expansion. Just to remind you why we do this at all. The idea is this is all about finding the inverse Laplace transforms. We can get the Laplace transform, these functions of S, into linear combinations of things that are in the table. Then we just look at what's in the table. And the inverse Laplace transform is the same linear combination of uh, corresponding time functions, functions of t. So I, I, I like to do things step by step. Um, not everybody does this the same way, but I'll tell you how I did it. First, what I call step zero, because I came up with this after I started with step one, is we, we need our transfer function or, or our, our overall thing that we want to invert. First of all, it needs to be a polynomial in S over another polynomial in S. And the denominator needs to be monic. That means the coefficient of this highest order term in the denominator has to be one. So this guy is not monic, this guy is monic. Um, the other thing is we're going to need the numerator, the power of the polynomial in the numerator to be at least one less than the power of the polynomial in the denominator. Um, if that's not true, you would have to use long division. Uh, it doesn't come up very much. And in my course, it doesn't come up at all. Uh, but you might have to make the denominator monic, and you just do that by dividing out. Like if this guy, you would divide numerator and denominator by three, and you'd end up with this guy. In this case, you've got that two there. You want this to be just S plus something to the third power. Well, you got to be a little careful with these powers here raised to the three power, you're really dividing by eight overall. Um, but anyway, convert this guy to that guy. So once we've done that, once we've made it monic, then this is the thing we're working with. P over Q, they're both polynomials. The degree of the numerator is at least less than the degree of the denominator. And that denominator term is mod. So once it's in that form, then we can start the PFE stuff. Now the first thing is if the first two steps actually are all about the denominator. Um, if it's not factored, you need to factor it. At least I didn't require anybody to factor anything worse than a polynomial than a quadratic. Uh, so this thing should be easy. This, you can see there's a factor of S you can pull out of it. And by factor, I mean down to the single real term or term with complex pair of roots. So here we have a real term. Here we have a real term. This term here has complex roots. Um, we deal with all real coefficients here. So our complex roots always come in um, conjugate pair. And we have a special way to treat those things. Um, you wouldn't have to factor this, you wouldn't have to factor that, but ultimately things need to be factored down into those terms. Real roots are complex roots. Those are simple complex conjugate pairs. After that, you express the original function as some of those terms. See, we've got we've got we've got it factored, right? In this case, all these roots, the roots of this denominator are zero, one, and minus three. Right? You know what a root is? And these are simple real roots, meaning simple or distinct means they're not raised to some power. And that is the case, you just 
split it up into the terms, those terms in the denominator. And what goes in the numerator are just constants that will be determined in later steps. Right now, we'll just call them A, B, C, up to how many you need. Uh, what if the roots are complex, but still distinct, meaning not, the term is not raised to some power? So here we have a real root of zero. Here we have a complex pair, in fact, an imaginary pair. They'll break, them, break it up into a sum as the denominators. But for the complex terms, it's, it's a linear term like this. ES plus C instead of just a constant. Kind of think of it as one power less than the denominator. Now here's another example. Both of these have complex or imaginary roots. We'll break it up into two things, sum of two terms with these as the individual denominators, and the numerators are the linear terms. These are both complex. What if you had repeated real roots? Like this here. Here, the root for this term is one plus one. But it's raised to a power, so it's repeated. When that is the case. Your sum includes all, all the types of terms of this from, from s to the one to whatever power it is. In this case, there's just two. So you have an s minus one once, another sum is s minus one squared. And you still have the s minus two term. Since they're all real roots, what goes in the numerator are just constants. Even though this is a quadratic denominator, because it's, it's a real root, ultimately a real root, we'll put a constant up there. Uh, so this guy is twice, so you have s and s squared. This guy is up to cubed, so you'll have s minus one, s minus one squared, s minus one cubed. Again, all real roots, so all constants in the numerators. Um, This is the same kind of thing. This term on the right is complex roots. This is another way to express it. I can get into that later, but this, this root here is real, but it's repeated. So we need those two terms for that guy. This complex root thing is not repeated. So that just gets the one term. And he gets the linear term in the numerator. All these guys with real roots, just get constants in the numerators. These are the only types of things that should ever be in any numerator. A constant or this linear term. Every case, constant, linear term, linear term, linear term. These are the only things that go in the numerators. I'll try to do all of PFE in one recording. It's kind of like long division. It's just a tedious procedure you go through. And it's the hard part of doing inverse Laplace transform. What if you have now complex roots that are repeated? See, like this guy, it has complex roots up to imaginary roots at uh, plus or minus i or plus or minus j, but it's repeated. And you kind of do it like the other one. This is a real root here. It's repeated twice, so you'll have s and s squared. This guy's a complex root. It's repeated twice, so you'll have it once to the one power, second to the two power. You go up to as high as the power of this. If it, if it was the fourth power, you would have four sums in, of that part. Everything with a real root is a constant. Everything with complex or imaginary roots, linear terms. Those two A's, two to B, C, and D, those are the four possibilities of how to break that up. So what about this guy? For one thing, you don't really care about the numerator as long as his power is one, at least one less than the denominator. 
Here we're going to have 2 plus 3 plus 4. That's 10, I think. So that 8 is less than 10. So we're good. I've got an S squared. So I'm going to have an S and an S squared. This guy's to three terms. So I'll have it to the one power, to the two power, to the three power. This guy is complex. I'll have it to the one power and then to the two power. All these guys with real roots, just a constant in the numerator. These guys with complex roots, linear terms in the numerator. You'll never actually get a problem this bad, at least not for me, uh, at least beyond this step. But this is how you would go about if you were given something this ugly, be the first step. Well, actually, the second. Now to step three, determine those numerators. Um, I think I will have to break this up into two recordings. Um, the one way and kind of the brute force and the old reliable way is, is called equating numerators. So hey, say this was what was given to us. We did step one and we factored it. Then we did step two and broke it up into a sum. Now look at this guy and this guy. If you were to put these guys over a common denominator, you would multiply A times this S plus three and then plus B times S plus one. That would be the numerator on the right side. There it is. On the left side, the numerator was S plus two. This numerator has to equal this numerator or the numerator you get when you cross multiply to get it over a common denominator. We don't really care about the denominator. We we want to equate numerators. Well, this S plus two equals this term. And now we just equate powers of S. And it only goes up to S to the one. So one here equals A plus B. That's just one equation. And S to the zero power would be two equals three A plus B. At this point, we have two equations and two unknowns. How to solve it. Usually you can just do it by substitution. And we find what the two Bs are. So well, now we can say, well, the, the A, the two Bs, I mean the A and the B. They're both a half in this case. So I have one half times S plus times divided by S plus one. Put the one half out front and what's left is in the table. Again, I'll pull one half out front and then what's left is in the table. You always want a term that's in the table. Sometimes you just can't just pull the constant off. It depends what's in the denominator. Now I look up these two terms in the table and they were e to the at, in fact, e to the minus one t, and this is e to the minus three t. There's our inverse Laplace transform. I think I'll do the remaining part in another recording.